hi, I'm Jeff Strong. I'm creator of the Auditory Brain Stimulation Therapy Rhythmic Entrainment Intervention and co-founder and creative director of BrainShiftRadio.com. Today I want to talk about goblet and barrel-shaped drums. Uh, I get a lot of emails from people asking me uh, about what kind of drums to get, what kind of drums to play, what drums do I play. Uh, you'll notice that most of my videos I'm playing this drum right here. Um, today I'm going to share with you what this is. I'm also going to show you some other barrel and goblet shaped drums and um, show you how to play them. So um, these types of drums are really common. You've got your djembes and your kungas uh, or conga drums uh, as some people would call them. Uh, these are drums that, that can be played between the lap and there's a lot of different styles nowadays, a lot of variations on a theme. Um, so let's start with actually the drum I'm playing here is kind of a hybrid. It's, it's a drum that you actually can't find anymore. It's called a gunga and it's from a, a company called Gumbops of California. Uh, Gungbops was a company um, that uh, the original Gungbops, uh, handmade drums out of California, they went out of business somewhere in the late 90s, I want to say 97, 98, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the last, this one here is the last drum they made before they went out of business. Um, and this is a Gunga. Um, it's very unusual. It's uh, essentially a um, conga drum, a conga drum, as most people would call it, that has a chamber which allows it to be the third to size. And the idea here was um, they, just, they, they were trying to make a drum that was a little more portable. Uh, the the, the uh, founder and owner of Kung Bops uh, was a Kung, Kung, Kunga player, and he, he did a lot of gigging, a lot of playing around the L.A. area, and um, he wanted something that would travel a little bit better. So he made this drum. It's a third the depth of a regular Kunga drum, which is this drum here. I'll pick that up in a minute so you can see what that looks like. And he put this chamber in to give it a little bit more resonance because just cutting it off didn't sound very good. Putting this little this, this little chamber in made it uh, sound a lot like a regular conga drum. But one of the cool things about this is because of this chamber, the shape of it, it's got a little bit more bass tone to it. And so this is why I like this drum. This drum um, is the same as the drum I'm playing here, except this is a smaller version. This is a quinto size. This is around 10 inches, a little shy of 10 inches. I think it's nine and three quarters. This is a 12 and a half. So this would be a tumba or tumbao, which is the largest size in a conga set. Uh, there's, there's another size which I have over here, which is a regular conga size, which is around 10 and a half, 11 inches. So um, these are my favorite drums. These are made of mahogany, and they have a uh, fiberglass coating on the outside to make them extra durable. And um, so this is a drum I play. Unfortunately, you can't find these anymore. Um, the reason I like these is because they have, they have an expressive sound, kind of like a djembe, which I'll show you in a second, uh, but the more controlled tone of a conga drum because they have a thick head. Uh, that's why I love these drums. So this is a gunga. Let me um, put this aside here. All right. And um, let me pick up uh, a djembe drum. Now this is, uh, this is a... a really high-tech djembe. Most djembes, this is an African drum, uh, most djembes are carved out of a single log. The, the key to the djembe is the goblet shape, by the way, uh, which is similar to the, the gunga in that you've got it narrowing down and then, and then um, extending further. And what happens here is because you have this shape that narrows down, there's, there's a, a, the ability for the bass sound to build up. So um, like this drum here, this gunga, has a really big bass sound. So does the, the djembe. Whereas a kunga drum doesn't really quite have that same bass because it's a barrel shape. And I'll pick that up, like I said, in a minute. Um, this djembe is, uh, like I said, it's really high tech. This one's made um, out of oak. It's got uh, a tunable uh, rim on it. And uh, this one does have a, a real head. This is a, a goat skin head, um, which is typical of the djembes. You'll find some djembes with thinner calf skin, but it's not gonna have the, the thicker cowhide that you're gonna find on some of the kungas, or in this case, the gunga. 
uh, the head actually on this drum is about half the thickness of this head, uh, which means that with the djembes, with the thinner head, uh, the more overtones you have, uh, which are, here you can hear this. It's a very cutting sound, but you can hear extra tones in it where this is very clean. It's more centered on one tone. This is a multiple tones. The thinner the head, the more tones you're going to have, the more overtones it's called you're going to have. So if you like the overtone sound of these djembes, thin head is the way to go. If you want something more controlled like this gunga or a lot of the kunga drums, thicker head is the way to go. Um, so this is your goblet shape. Goblet shapes are not just limited to djembes. I have a couple of, couple of other things here. One's kind of a weird one. This is um, kind of a wood djembe. This is made by a company called Toka. Um, it's kind of weird in that it's just it's 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 built like a cajon, which is a I know you've probably seen them. Cajons are boxes that you play. You actually sit on and play uh, between your legs. Same technique that you use on this drum. This is a uh, wood a wood gunga or a conga. Um, this is a wood djembe. It's kind of cool. Uh, the one thing I liked about it when I when I saw it is that it didn't have a synthetic or it didn't have a natural head. And since I live in the high desert, um, a lot of the natural skin heads will crack. They get really dry. It's it's very um, very dry here, and so this I knew wasn't going to crack on me. Although I am seeing some cracks in the varnish on the um, on the wood here, but. Very cool drum. Um, another style, I'm gonna put, put this back over here. Another style is a, um, a dumbek or darbuka. This is, this is a dumbek. Um, this is a metal one, kind of uh, unusual. You'll find some of these tin, pin, punch tin uh, ones out there. They're, they're nice, but again, you've got the goblet shape. Some people play in between their legs. That's not the traditional way to play it. Traditional way to play it is on your lap with your fingertips. That's a different technique. I'll cover that in a different video when I talk about frame drums. But some people will play this between their legs. It also has the bass tone. So um, that's again because of this chamber that's created by narrowing the shell. So, okay, so conga drums conga drums, depending on how you want to pronounce it, are barrel shapes. This one's very heavy, but you'll get the picture here. It's basically a barrel shape like this. This is made by LP, Latin percussion. Um, it's a very nice drum. Uh, I don't like it as much because it doesn't have the bass tone, but I do play these a lot. This is what you'll find for most conga players playing, obviously. Um, this is the middle size one. I've got the full set of three here. Most conga players that are playing contemporary music are playing three drums. They're playing the little one called the quinto, the middle one called the conga, and the large one called the tumba or tumbao. Um, I regularly play the large one when I'm playing my conga just because uh, this is my favorite drum right now. Um, another variation on this kind of goblet barrel-shaped concept is, a, is a, this Remo drum here. And this is just a straight-sided drum uh, I won't pick it up because the, the, the clay pot is on top, but it doesn't have the shape, the, the curve that the conga drum has. It's straight up and down. And this is called a tubano. And it's one of the early Remo drums. Remo makes a whole bunch of, of drums, uh, all different shapes and sizes. Uh, one thing about the Remo drums that you may or may not like is they all use synthetic heads. They use Remo heads. Synthetic heads are great for thinner heads because they, they're not going to crack on you. The, diff, the, the, the downside to them is they don't have quite the depth of sound. They're not kind of as rich and expressive. Um, I prefer the natural skin head if I can, uh, even if it's like this djembe here, fairly thin. It just has a little bit better tone to it. So, but you choose based upon what your, your goals are. If you're starting out and you want something durable and you want something that's not going to change pitch depending on where you go, Synthetic head is great. Remo makes wonderful drums. There are other manufacturers that, that also have synthetic heads under drums. I think you can get some on the LP or the Toka or some of these other brands nowadays, the Kung Bops. Um, most of the, the Kunga drums and the Djembe drums that you find, though, are going, except for Remo, are going to have a natural skin head. 
And those are fine, they don't tend to crack as much. It's when we get into the frame drums like these, which I'll talk about in another video, that that thin head can be a real problem. Um, they'll crack if they're, if they're real. And so I have a lot of synthetic frame drums just because it gets so dry here that they will crack. Um, and I have a bunch around here I can show you actually that, that have the, the head cracked and they're useless at that point. So, um, so that's the, the basics on the, the gunga um, and the barrel and the goblet shapes. These drums, um, you can find some as low as maybe $100. They're not going to be great. They'll be a student model drum, but most decent djembes are going to be three, dollars $400 or more. A really high-end uh, conga drum like these LPs are close to $1,000 a piece. These gungas, if you could even get them, I think I paid about 1000 bucks each for them. Um, so they're going to run the gamut. You, if, you're, if you're on a budget and you want to just get started drumming, watch my video on frame drums because they start as low as $30 and there's a lot you can do there. As a matter of fact, you can start off and not even play a drum. You could use a hardcover book. Um, but there's something really fun about these goblet and barrel shaped drums because they're, they're louder, they're, they're, there's a lot you can do with them, they're great in groups, so they're, they're really popular for drum circles. So if you ever want to play in a drum circle with other people, good way to go. The djembe is obviously the most, um, I shouldn't say obviously, the djembe is the most common one that you're going to find using, used in uh, therapeutic drumming, drum circles or whatnot. For some reason, they have kind of found their way in there. Um, you can find djembe's everywhere, so good way to, good way to start. Uh, how to play it? Pretty simple. There are four basic strokes that you have to worry about in this drum. Um, and that's going to be true for almost every drum. But uh, you basically have your open tone. Now, your open tone is fairly simple. You're playing with um, your knuckle here, the, 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 the knuckle part of your palm, hitting the edge of the drum, and then your fingers hitting the drum and bouncing off. You want them to come off the head. You want the, 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 the tone to ring for as long as possible. And you want it to be the richest sound that you can get. On the djembe, you're going to have this kind of a sound. So you want to have basically these, this part of the bone hitting the edge of the drum. That's an open tone. Now bass tone is you're going to hit, hit, hit your palm in the drum a little bit. Now how far you go into the drum is dependent on the thickness of the head, the diameter of the drum, and the pitch it's tuned to. So this drum, I'm hitting pretty close to the middle. That's a bass tone. Um, it's the deepest tone you can get. It's going to be big on these goblet shaped drums. It's not going to be big on a barrel shaped drum. It just doesn't have the chamber that, that builds the bass. Whereas with the djembe, it's a very big bass tone. Thinner the head, the bigger the bass tone is going to be. So uh, it's another thing to keep in mind. Djembe's have the most range from your from your, your pitch as far as your bass, your open tone, and the slap. And the slap tone is where you hit the edge of the drum a little further down to the kind of the palm of your hand, right down to the heel, and you're, pit, you're, you're, you're um, creating a peak with your fingers and you're pressing your fingers into the head. And you're choking it off. That's the most difficult tone to create on these drums. It does take some finger strength. It also creates, uh, requires the right touch. And a good slap tone is kind of like a great golf swing or a tennis swing. It, it's, it's a little bit elusive. There's going to be times when it's just beautiful and you can just feel that, that, that pop. Other times it's going to feel like it just didn't quite hit. Um, a lot of it has to do with the pitch of your drum. If you're in the sweet spot, if you're in the spot of the, 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 the tuning of that drum where the, the head resonates the best for the size and, and thickness of the shell, um, that slap tone will be better. If, you, if, you're, if you're too low, and that's, a, that's where the biggest problem is, if the pitch is too low, the slap tone will just kind of die. Um, so on the uh, djembe, it sounds like this.
Again, you're choking it off. You're hitting with the, the palm of your hand, choking it off. And the fourth stroke is a muted tone, and it's basically an open tone. You're hitting, again, right here on the edge of the drum, but you're barely hitting the drum. It's, 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 it's just touching. And that's the underlying pattern. So um, if I'm playing a rhythm, and I'm going to play um, a 3-3-2 three, three, rhythm, which is a rhythm I share a lot. It's really fairly simple. It's also called a mambo. It's also considered one of the most, as far as I'm concerned, the most popular rhythm in the world, whether it's used therapeutically or just in music. For some reason, a 3-3-2, is a really common uh, subdivision, and it'll be like this. So I'm going to play... Um, I'm going to play all four notes. So on the first grouping of three, I'm going to do an open tone. On the second grouping of three, I'm going to play a slap tone. And on the grouping of two, I'm going to play a bass tone. So on the ones of each of those, I'll be playing those notes. And the twos and the threes, I'm going to be playing muted tones. It's going to sound like this. Very simple rhythm. This rhythm uses all the notes that you, uh, all the, the hand strokes that you can use. It's a great one to work with. Again, it's fairly simple. You've got an open tone, just played right here. Let your fingers bounce off the head. Uh, that's the first grouping of, 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 of three, the first one. The second grouping of three is in your left hand. You're going to be playing slap tone. And that's again hitting here on the edge of the drum and slapping, choking it off with your fingers. And then the grouping of two. The one of the grouping of two is going to be played the bass tone with the right hand, which is hitting the drum towards the center. Muted tones are simply in the open tone position, but played very qu quietly, just touching the head. So it'd be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one. So that's barrel and gobble shaped drums are a great place to start. If you play frame drums now and you want to add these drums in, it's a good choice. If you're just starting out and you think you're going to be in a drum circle, it's also a good choice. Um, if you just like the feel of the big sound, it's a great choice. Uh, again, uh, you have different options with synthetic heads or natural heads. You have um, a bunch of different manufacturers. You have, you have really tribal looking djembes which are carved and they're rope tuned. And you have these high tech djembes and you've got you know, the whole gamut. So you can find one that fits your style. Play the 332 for a while. You'll get pretty good at it. And if you're interested, take my drum healing course and I can show you a whole ton of rhythms to be able to dig deep into how to use these drums therapeutically.